Do 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 do. Can you make a sound? Do 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 Excellent. That's a good look. I've just had a hit of tennis. Oh, don't take it off. I know how props just kill on podcasts. It's the secret to a great, every great podcast is props. So I thought I'd leave it on. Keep it on. You might work up a sweat during this podcast, and I don't want I don't want like moisture getting on the microphone or anything like that. So fair enough. Fair enough. I hear you had a bit of an Apple mishap. Oh man, it's just. You know how you have a week and suddenly you're spending half of your day in an Apple store um, <laughs> having people with blue T-shirts and offering very professional advice, geniuses. Mm. Um, yeah, I had one of those this week. I, believe it or not, driving along on my Vespa in the middle of Adelaide in the CBD, I pull up at the lights and a person, a voice next to me in a car says, mate, I think you've lost something out of your pocket. And I turn and, of course, being Adelaide, it's like, a friend, someone I know, <laughs> and mm. and um, and so I circle back around, go back, and, and my, it's my it's my AirPods and my phone just laying in the middle of the road. I was like, oh golly gosh, oh. they've they've actually because it was a hot day, but I had a jacket on, so I unzipped my jacket, and they're, it's flapping around, and because they're heavy in the pockets, you don't think they're gonna you know fall out, but mm. but they did, and mm. so I picked up like the the the. Um, the AirPods were strewn along. Like there was one there, and then there was another one that was totally crushed. And then there was the case, and I was like, oh, "Okay, I've saved one. That's good." And then I saw my phone, and I thought, "Oh, that's all right. Looks looks okay. Like it was, you know, glass side up, and it was all shiny." So I'm like, "Oh, that's great." So I thought, "I'll just wait for these cars to go past." And this bus, and just like in a movie, it was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> what did the bus run over or a car the bus the bus oh smash so it was i was literally looking at it oh. and it was all shiny the bus went past and then suddenly it was like a dull gray and i was oh. like oh okay and i went over and it's just smashed Shattered. yeah no so in front of you oh. i know right in front of me and so i thought i thought hopefully i was thinking oh maybe it's just one of those you know get the um screen replacement but nah it had pushed in the camera it was the person who replaced the screen said nah this is not gonna not gonna be any good so go on and you were you covered by any kind of warranty or anything like that or no 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 no, it it was um you know like i've had it for a long time actually and this one i was really determined not to upgrade like i really liked it it's small it's the like 12 mini and they don't make them that small anymore so I'm like, I'm out of contract. I think I came out of contract in February. And so I feel like I'm actually, it's making me money. It's like, woo, I'm free. I'm out. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not going to replace it, even though I know you're going to try and slow it down, Apple and all the rest of it. But then it, they arranged yeah. for a bus to come and track it down and run over it. So Yeah, <laughs> Apple, Apple are pretty good like that. So uh, are you going to get like the new shiny super AI, you know, bells and whistles one that's just out? No, no, I got like the one, the next one, sort of uh, the fourteen. I got the fourteen, the base model. I don't, I don't. No. AI fight is annoying. I don't, I don't look forward to AI mm. invading my devices and no. things. And unless I go to Chat GBT to to do one particular specific task that I give it, I don't want it like mm. like in WhatsApp now. I, I use WhatsApp, and then an AI sort of tries to help, and it's like, what do, what do you? doing this is supposed to be private why are you in here as well like move, move aside please you know i had an apple mishap too in the last week or so which unbelievably i think may even trump having your phone literally run over by a bus oh yeah it's a pretty yeah. good one yeah so yeah our little boy's nanny who's with us a few days a week and is like the most important person in our life because that allows us to work and do our jobs and stuff like that so she's like she's an absolute blessing but she she was baking cookies with um, Edward mm. just like, you know, a week or so ago. And along with the baking tray and the cookies, unbeknownst to her, she picked up Edward's iPad underneath the baking tray and put it in the oven. And after 10 or 15 minutes, she was like, oh, those cookies are smelling weird <laughs> and checked. And she she'd put the iPad in the oven and had baked the iPad. 
and it's baked. How long for baked? Like it was melting. It well, yeah, the screen has come like separated from the body of the iPad and stuff. So it was right. like, yeah, I don't know how long it was in for. Probably fifteen minutes or something. But yeah, completely cooked it. Oh dear. So yeah. <laughs> I've also made an investment uh, in Apple just recently to replace that. So, Wow. Mm. Has anyone else had stories this week? Has it been a week where Apple just sends out carnage? Yeah, they've, like, like- they've just done it. They've sent out the elves to go and, go and ruin all their products because they need to up their sales. Oh, yeah. What's the best phone or electronic device damage story you have? Let us know. Send us an email. Send us a Reddit. Send us a Patreon message. We want to hear. What's your best one? Can you top a bus or an oven? I think the oven tops it. I think that is because it's you've, it's unintentionally self-inflicted. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, and it's like weird. Like everyone, you know, if stuff falls on the road and gets run over. But who puts an iPad in the oven? Mm, mm, mm. Edward's nanny. That's so <laughs> she she was felt very guilty and like offered to pay for it and stuff. But of course she's not. But. Uh, he 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 would have broken it anyway somehow. Did you say it was with with brownies? Was it what was being cookies? Co- I think it cookies. was. Cookies. Did you eat the cookies or were they sort of said to be contaminated? And I don't know. I actually don't know if they were left on the side. I doubtless would have eaten them, but I don't know if she uh, binned that batch. She probably did. Probably She's pretty did. responsible. You, you never know what's burning mm. in there. Mm. There's some pretty exotic metals in um, in an iPad. You don't want them vaporizing and getting into your cookies. No, we, we, we recommend that you bake your iPads separately from other food. Don't do cookies and... <laughs> yeah, or at least on a different shelf. On a di- that's right, on a different shelf, to let them rise. <laughs> Let's get into parish notices. All right. Oh, yes, good. Yes, yes. So in the... I think it was the last episode, we... Uh, really got stuck into a South Australian town. or I mean, they call themselves a city, but I don't know what. <laughs> it's a country town to, to me called Wyala. Don't rub salt in the wound, man. But yeah. <laughs> no, which, which I suggested wasn't very nice. And Tim was heartily agreed with me until he realised the coming weekend he was presiding over the marriage of a couple from Wyala, mm. at which point he backtracked. That's right. Not very successfully, but he, but he did backtrack. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> beautiful people. Mm. Lots of sun. Mm. So I got I got a message from Jake and Beck. It says, We are the Wyala couple that Tim married last Saturday. Just wanted to say a huge thank you to Tim for doing the wedding. He guided us through the whole process. And with his support, the day turned out perfectly. Our only criticism is that he didn't offer to play guitar at our reception. <laughs> Having lived together in Wyala for five years, it's actually not too bad especially if you like dust storms and ants. Our intention was to get Tim a Wyala souvenir spoon as a thank you gift, but thanks to the bustling Wyala economy, they have been out of stock for several months. We had to settle for getting him a jar of Wyala dirt, as per your recommendation. (laughs) There we go. You didn't play guitar at the wedding. I know, I can't, I can't. I mean, you, you really do have to pay extra for that. I mean, <laughs> was was Colonel Katrina there, the other half of Two Piece Feed? No, no, no. Oh, okay then. No, That's all right then. It was out in a garden somewhere, and and yeah, no, it was a beautiful wedding. Um, really lovely people, mm. really lovely wedding. Um, but no, there was mm. I didn't I didn't re- I, I I you know I threw it a few gags. There was I played for the crowd a little bit. That oh, was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, just a few, just a couple. Did you, did you do a couple of podcast ideas? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I did halfway uh, through. Here's one for you. Here's here's a freebie that I'm not. Here's a freebie. Not even going to do this one on the podcast. This is exclusive to your wedding. I had. I, I was just starting the wedding, saying, oh, "Hello, everyone. My, you know, my name's Tim. I'm a Uniting Church minister." From the third row, I heard someone going, "No, oh, I heard it was going to be Brady." <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh dear. So I have it here. Here they no. They they they're not. You got the dirt. I do. Here I have a jar of Wyala dirt. Wow. Uh, it's, it's, look, it's, it's quite brown. I imagine it to be quite red. I mean, this is... I, would, I dare not open it. Who knows what's in it? But it's mm. <laughs> it's real dirt. I've got a real jar of Wyala dirt to put on the shelf and to remember Jake and Beck. Well, we should ask Jake and Beck whether they'd be willing to contribute a jar of Wyala dirt to our hamper that we're currently collecting gifts for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. And that also lets me segue to letting people know we are accepting gifts for the hamper. Give us a jar of dirt from where you live or something from where you live or something that's special to you. 
to go in the hamper. The address and all the details are in the description. We want to collect stuff from all you listeners to go into our big gift hamper that will then be gifted at some point to someone. One of the cool things at the wedding with Jake and Beck was that I... They, they actually, they didn't just get me that as a gift, which was really lovely. It's not often you walk away from the wedding, you know, with, having, with a gift under your arm, which always looks a bit suspicious, like I'm making off with one of their gifts from the gift table. Mm. But um, if it was just a piece of dirt, that would be okay. But actually, their, the gift box they gave me was quite large. And so I opened it, and inside I found this. It's a Wyala, Wyala Monopoly. <laughs> They've made a wireless theme monopoly. Or is it? It says air on the front. Is it more the Air Peninsula? It's, it's the Air Peninsula. It's called, it, but it's called yeah. the Wild Side. So this is this whole peninsula area. Um, there's a couple of peninsulas, three peninsulas in Adelaide: um, the York Peninsula, the anyway, and the Air Peninsula in South Australia. In South Australia, sorry, yes. Um, yeah. Flurio, York, and Air. That's right. Yeah. And this is the Air Peninsula, and you can actually you can play Wyala. You, you can mm. you can um, purchase property in Wyala. Um, in Monopoly, for real. Are they using Monopoly prices or are they even cheaper because it's Wyala? <laughs> <laughs> are, are the Wyala properties like those two brown ones at the start near, near, that are really cheap? I, I don't think it's Paul Mall and Park Lane. I do. It's, no. It's like one of those chance cards. Oh, you have been gifted four Wyala properties. <laughs> Move to go. <laughs> You got second place in your beauty pageant. You now own the town of Wyala. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The port. There's also the Port Lincoln Hotel and the Cummins Local Produce. Those sorts of areas. Oh yeah, I'm looking at the board now. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. No, take isn't... a picture, Tim. We'll put a pic- we'll put a picture of that in the notes for people to have a look at. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice present. Can I ask you something about being the minister at a wedding? You talk about getting presents. Can I ask you something? Yes, you may. You know how there are little courtesies people do in life that they think is a big deal, like. Um, like when you let another car go past or something and you do a little raise of the finger to the person and thank you and you feel that smug, nice feeling that I've done a nice gesture. As long as it's not the middle finger, obviously. But yes, I know what you mean. No. (laughs) Yes. Well, actually, as an Adelaide driver, you're probably unfamiliar with the whole practice of politely letting someone go in front of you, but it does happen in other cities, trust me. Whenever I'm at a wedding, something I always like to do after the ceremony when everyone's leaving is go up to the the minister. Because the minister is usually, not always, but is usually a bit of a stranger at the wedding. I know in your case, not always, but sometimes they're a bit of an outsider. They've Mm, just come in mm. for the day and stuff. So they're they're not someone you know. But I love going up to them afterwards. And I always think it's a really, like, gentlemanly thing to do, to go up to the minister and thank them for doing the ceremony and shake their hand and and then leave. And I always think, oh... Wasn't that decent of me? What a good person I am. (laughs) Right. Hmm. Does everyone do that to the minister? Does everyone come up to you afterwards and say, thank you and shake your hand and smugly think they're doing like they're doing something a little bit gracious and nice? Everyone does it, but no one else does it smugly. (laughs) (laughs) I don't do it smugly to the minister. I just feel smug on the inside. No, look, everyone's very courteous. You are right, though. It's a strange thing at a wedding because you're, you're as the, the minister, you're centre stage. Hmm. Like you're doing most, you do more talking than anyone. You're sort of the, the, the you know, the master of ceremonies. Yeah. Headliner. Headliner. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, um, but, but you're also, you're also there to be invisible too. Like, so it's, it's your job hmm. to make it all happen, but not make it about you. And the way you hmm. do that is to be competent, but not you know, self-referential. But afterwards, people, yeah, you do, you stand around and you're a stranger. People don't actually, Mm. you know what I mean, care about you, your bit's over, but you get chatting. And people always say thank you. They always say, oh, you know, that was really lovely Mm. or thank you, I really appreciated Mm. that and and, uh, or you did a good job. I think it's because it's one of those jobs that people can't imagine themselves doing. Like they think it's really hard or something, whereas I just find it marvellous and easy and natural. But... People seem amazed. Oh, see, I always think it's I always think it's because like people thank the minister because they think no one else will, no one else will think to. But I think everyone thinks to, which kind of defeats the purpose. Like I remember a few times my wife has said, "Oh, you should go and thank the minister." Like you see them standing mm. off to the side mm. or something. You should go thank the minister. That would be a good thing to do. Mm. And you go up and do it and think that you're the one that did it. You know, mm. I did it because no one else would have thought to. But I think everyone thinks to. Yes. So the minister <laughs> must get sick of everyone thanking them, but thinking they're the only person that thought to thank them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, it's mm. yeah. Well, it, it's appreciate. I certainly appreciate it. You don't speak to everyone, and some people are a bit awkward. Like you know, they just sort of mm. like because there's a lot of weddings are funny in that not everyone knows everyone else either, and there's lots of small talk, and there's lots of standing around mm. as well. So there's lots of chit chat and mm. things like that. I went to a wedding and I got sat next. The minister was invited to the reception even though he was a bit of an outsider. Mm. And uh, I got sat next to him because yep. I was a bit of an outsider too. So I think we were like, you know, the, the table of outsiders. You're on the kids' table together. <laughs> I loved it, man. I went hard on the questions about religion and faith and stuff. Oh, d- did you? Like, It was an episode of Unmade on Steroids. Oh, yeah, because I, like, I had full access to him for an hour or two. And I could just go. I could ask him all the questions. It was great. Was it in a joking and fun? Like it was a good, fun and inter- enjoyable conversation. Oh no, yeah, it more yeah. Like no, it wasn't, it wasn't hostile. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't hostile. It was like it was, but it was you know, but it was probing. It was more than superficial. You know? mm, mm. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's move on because we're we're going for ages and we've got loads of stuff to do later, as you'll find out. Uh, I also just wanted to say I got a, a, an email from one of our listeners. Do you remember, like, two episodes ago, we got an email from someone whose surname was Beers, Mm. and he talked about the fact he didn't like beer? Yeah. I got another email from uh, a woman, completely separate, whose surname is also Beers, asking me to put her in touch with the original Beers, because she wants to find (laughs) out if they're related. And it's got me wondering, how many people listening to this podcast are called Beers? (laughs) Is, something, is there something going on here? You know, you've only got about 10 listeners. How many can be called beers? <laughs> Two of them so far. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We're like a, we're oh, like dear. a, what are they, what's it called? Ancestry.com for, for the beers clan. That's what we are. Yeah, Everyone. we are. This is like, we're getting them all back together. Let's, let's have a big family reunion for the beerses. Maybe there's something in the DNA of the beers family that they just love podcasts about, you know, ideas for podcasts. It's like a. It could be. It could be. If you're listening and your surname is Beers, get in touch. Get in touch. Yes. Two people already have. <laughs> also, this was an interesting one. This came from Amelia in South Africa. I thought you'd like this one. Uh, for context, for people who don't know, Tim has told us in the past that he occasionally has battled against the habit of biting his nails. I'm writing to tell you about a quaint development that has happened in my life as a result of the podcast. My partner is not an avid listener of podcasts, though I do on occasion let an episode of Unmade play in the background while we're spending quiet time together. On a particular episode, the name and number of which escapes me, Brady suddenly and loudly exclaimed, Tim, you're biting your nails. My partner found this particularly relatable as she frequently has to remind me, a fellow nail biter, to stop biting my nails. She had a good chuckle and I thought that was the end of it. That is, until the next day, when she loudly exclaimed, Tim, you're biting your nails. <laughs> this caught me off guard, as I am a woman and my name is not Tim. <laughs> but I put two and two together rather quickly. This has since evolved into just Tim. When she observes me biting my nails, I am promptly met with a sharp Tim, which acts as an effective reminder to stop biting my nails. Classic. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Do you have like a, a shorthand or a warning word or anything that your wife will say to you if she catches you biting your nails to kind of help you not do it? No, no. It's actually, it's it's my um, daughters who pull me up on the nail biting. Yeah. My wife, I think over the years has realised this is the least of my vices. And if, you know, if I nail bite, then that's perfectly fine. It's much better than, you know, <clears throat> smoking or anything else like that. So, mm. um, but my kids, yeah, are on to me about it. They pull me up and, and they just have to say, you know, dad, or they say Tim or something like that and look across and they'll just mm. be, you know, waving the little fingers or okay. something like that. Yeah. Mm. yeah right. I do remember that there, there, we have a tone that's similar to that when I'm speeding in the car. That's another vice that my wife will pull me up on. And she always repeats the, the language given to me by the words of a police officer who said, Slow down, Timothy, all those years ago. And she says that as we're driving along. She'll just go, slow down, Timothy. That's her way of um, okay. reminding me. Yeah. I like the idea that people out there would would um, who are biting their nails are being called Tims, though. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had an idea on the last episode called Before My Time, which basically was talking about things that happened the day before you were born. Mm. And I encourage people to get in touch, and quite a few did, so I thought I'd run through a few. Uh, Ellen said, 
While nothing interesting happened the day before I was born, my mum has quite an interesting one. She was born on the 5th of April, 1968. Oh, here we go, Tim. She was born on the 5th of April, 1968. Can you guess what happened on the 4th of April, 1968? The 4th of April, 1968. You're a chance of getting it because you probably... That's not the moon landing. That's 69. No. Mm. Of April 68. Uh, Do you want me to give you a clue? Yes. A shot rang out in the Memphis sky. Oh, right. That's when Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. Assassinated. He was, he was assassinated. Oh. Yeah. So Ellen says, not a super cheery one, but I remember learning about it in school and it stuck with me ever since. P.S. Yesterday was my best friend Frances's birthday. So if you happen to read this aloud on the pod, please wish her a happy late birthday. She's a big fan and the one who introduced me to your show. Sorry, Ellen, we don't do birthday readouts, so we cannot wish a happy birthday to Frances. No. But, uh, but, but it was nice of you to ask. Mm, indeed. Yes. I also mm. will refrain from saying happy birthday. Uh, Christian says, the interesting thing that happened the day before I was born was the 11th of March, 2011, the Tohoku earthquake, tsunami, and Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan that altogether killed almost 20,000 people. Oh, dear. Nice one, Christian. Thanks. Uh, they're, they're, all, they're all pretty miserable, actually. <laughs> Debbie says, I checked Wiki for what happened on the day before my birth. The first entry was about three people being murdered at Sundown Station in South Australia while travelling by car from Alice Springs to Adelaide. I don't like the murder part, but the Adelaide connection was amusing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Sundown Station. You know, coincidentally, I think the pub in Wyala is called the Sundowner. I wonder if it was Wyala on the way through. Hmm. I don't think I I actually researched the murder uh, later and they didn't they didn't get as far as Wyala. So I don't think there's a connection. That's unlike you to follow a, a small detail into a Wikipedia rabbit hole. <laughs> yes, I went, I went deep. I also went deep on this next one, uh, which I'm reading out from Barbara. And uh, I'm reading this because it has a, uh, an interest to both of us. Um, Barbara says, exactly one week before I was born, a plane crashed exactly between our house and the hospital where I was born, oh. a 1.5 mile radius. This was LL flight 1862 on the 4th of October 1992. It's quite infamous in the Netherlands. Side note, Tim, it's actually the most deadly plane crash to ever happen in the Netherlands. Um, It's infamous in the Netherlands, especially because there's still a lot unclear about the contents of the plane. It was a cargo plane. And because it's so politically sensitive with Israel's Mossad involved. The most important documents are sealed until 2062. This is something I'm personally quite angry about because I was born with severe asthma and other weird health issues like many other people who were around the site at the time. So I would like to know what might be the cause. But it's still a fascinating story that my parents keep reminiscing about during every birthday that I have. Oh, wow. Oh, golly Mm. gosh. I'm sorry to hear that. What was on the plane? What was on the plane? And I hope you're okay, Barbara. Katie says... Uh, Katie was born in 1987. The day before I was born, there was an enormous stock market crash. Mm. It was so significant, it earned the name Black Monday. I never did any research about the cause of the crash, but it's been a running gag in my family that the world's banks just went into a panic when they heard I was coming. In a similar vein, the day after my twins were born was the hottest day on record in Portland, Oregon. So we like to say they set the world on fire when they got here. And speaking of fire, ice distinct on the subreddit said, I was born on 2111 of the Annus Horribilis, so the day before Windsor Castle caught fire. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, pr- lots, of, lots, of, lots of miserable ones. There weren't many happy ones there, were there? It's all death and carnage, but I guess that's what makes the news. Well, indeed. That's right. Yes. What births make the news? The royal births make the news? Are there any other births that yeah. make the news? Like if a prime minister or a political leader has a child. In, some generally, celebrities. Generally in office, that's right. If they, That's yeah, yeah, pretty rare. Yeah. Big celebrities, maybe. Or if you're really old, like Al Pacino and Robert De Niro keep having all these babies. Yes, that's right. While they're in their 80s and stuff. Yeah, Walt Disney. Yeah, that's about it, isn't it? Not many babies. Uh, oh, oh, and of course, there's always the, uh, the January 1st babies. You know, they always do oh, a story yes. of those just after midnight. First of the year. Yeah. yeah. You would have written a few of those in your time. Did you do any of those? Oh, I think I've only done a couple in my time. Not many. Mm. I've probably I've probably drawn that drawn drawn that uh, short story a few times. That's a bad shift is it over like as a journo that's like are oh, you got to work Christmas, like oh, New Year's Eve and then I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, I worked that one a lot. I, I, I actually make a joke. I probably didn't mind getting that one. It's a pretty easy one to do. It's a nice story to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just pretending to be a really important journalist that only does big stories. I actually enjoy those little ones. So, Tim, this is normally where we would do our ideas for podcasts, mm. but we're going to do something different today. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a quick fire round, as much as you and I are capable of doing quick fire, of ideas that have been submitted by listeners, particularly our stakeholders, our Patreon supporters. I put the word out to them and gave them first dibs, and they have overwhelmed me with ideas. And I want to run them by you, and we'll discuss them. Maybe we should give them each one a mark out of ten. We like giving things a mark out of 10, don't we? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I can't believe it's taken us 150 episodes to get to this, to actually have an episode that's devoted to other people's ideas. Well, we have discussed uh, others' ideas before, but never like in this kind of quickfire round type way. And it has taken us the best part of 20 odd minutes to get to it as well, after all that (laughs) self-indulgent parish notices. So let's not be too... uh, Humble. Jake and Beck sort of took over most of it with their wedding, didn't they? But they dirt. <laughs> um, the first one comes from someone we know. It is Colonel Katrina. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she, this, this is a good one. I've put it at the top of the list not because it's Colonel Katrina, but because I like it. Do you have a Colonel Katrina hotline on your desk? Like, just re- <laughs> podcast-related information, just a direct line? A big red phone. <laughs> no. This is this is one she sent in. Yeah. Her idea for a podcast is called Regrettably Successful. Oh, yeah. She's told me about this idea. I was going to steal this idea. Oh, darn it. Well, you now can't. she sent it in. She's got it. I think it's on my list somewhere. Darn it. <laughs> you better make sure you cross it off. <laughs> All right. Read it out. For those who don't know, Colonel Katrina is a member of Tim's congregation. Uh, so that's why he would have access to her ideas. Um uh, she goes on, this is a podcast about times in life when something you wanted to happen did indeed happen, but you then came to regret it. This idea was inspired by an incident when my son was about 18 months old. I came across a beautiful picture book about waltzing Matilda at a secondhand bookshop and decided to buy it so I could introduce the song to my son, since it's a quintessential Australian song. Not only did my son love the book and the song, there was a period of several months where I was called upon to sing Walsing Matilda while flicking through the book about half a dozen times a day. It was unacceptable to play a recording. I had to sing it to him. The purchase of the book to introduce Walsing Matilda to my son was regrettably successful. From Colonel Katrina. P.S. My son is a few years older now and occasionally sings Walsing Matilda to himself while going to sleep. Aww. So, I've, before we talk about the idea, yeah. I've got a question. How would a children's picture book deal with Walsing Matilda, a song in which a man steals a sheep from a, you know, illegally, mm. stuffs it into a bag, mm. and then commits suicide by drowning mm. when the police arrive? Mm. Is that depicted in the pictures or, or do they change the narrative? I haven't seen this book, I have to say. Um, hmm. But I think kids are okay with that kind of stuff. Like, look at the Roadrunner and the Wily Coyotes going off cliffs and getting smashed. and You know what I mean? All that sort of stuff. It's just yeah. born yeah. and it happens. I think that's okay. It's only older when we get really offended by that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we start to see the reality of it. You didn't want your young'uns to watch Titanic because there was drowning in it. No, my wife didn't want them to. I was happy to. Oh, yeah. You were all up for it. <laughs> you were like, boing, the ship sank. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want them to be introduced to Leonardo DiCaprio too early. <laughs> that was my worry. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely don't want them introduced to him now. <laughs> um, the other question I'm sure everyone has is, what does it sound like when Colonel Katrina sings Walsing Matilda? Oh. Got you covered. Got you covered. Oh, really? Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Once a jolly swagman can by a billabong under the shade of a coolabar tree. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy board. You come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda, you'll come a waltz 
sing Matilda with me. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy board. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Notice there she only does the first verse. She yes. doesn't deal with the drowning. No, I know. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's mm. the PC abridged version. The other thing is there, she's singing a cappella, and like, I know Colonel Katrina is like a super talented musician and plays about 19 different instruments, and how come we haven't got a, like an instrument accompanied version? Why wasn't the other member of Two Piece Feed recruited in for this particular performance? That's what I'd like to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. I think that's a good idea. Out of 10? I'd, I'd give it an 8. Because I think it's something mm. that people would enjoy to talk about. Everyone's got one story, and yep. yeah, I think it's a strong idea. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eight as well. I mean, my I feel like regrettably successful is the story of a lot of my working life. Mm-hmm. Like I have, I have these like stupid ideas that like become successful enough that I have to follow them through, and I end up, you know, doing all these stupid show bags for the unmade podcast or. <laughs> 118 <laughs> videos about elements on the periodic table or a video about every book of the Bible. So, yeah, mm, there you mm. go. I, I, I understand the sentiment of regrettably successful. I always warn people that have ideas now, like for video projects and podcasts and that. Be careful. But think, if this is successful, what will I actually have to do? Mm. People don't often think about that. One one obvious example of this, of course, is the the musician who has the one hit wonder and then they come to hate it, or particularly if they don't like the song at all and they're going to play it for the yeah. rest of their life. It's all people want to hear yeah. and they've got much better songs in their view that, that people don't want mm. to hear. Yeah. It becomes a millstone. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Max from Germany. My podcast idea is about castles and castle ruins. There are so many of them all over the world with interesting stories, colourful historical figures, local customs, neat trivia. My girlfriend and I talked about how long it would take to visit all the castles in Germany. And it turns out it would probably take a lifetime and hundreds of thousands of kilometres of driving. So there's always enough material for the podcast. As for the title, Drawbridge Diaries, Rampart Radio... The Fortress Files? Hmm. I mean, YouTube, yes. I'm not sure about a podcast. I mean, I know you can walk through it. You can give the history. That's great. But so much of it is visual. I don't agree. I don't agree. Uh, Yes, of course it would make a good video and you want to see the castles. But I think it would work as a podcast. I think you could execute it as a podcast. And the thing about podcasts is they're useful when you can't watch videos, Mm. when you're driving, when you're lying in bed, various other times. And I think you could get enough out of it to uh for it to work you probably wouldn't have to visit them if i'm being really practical about it you could probably just research the castles and make a podcast about them and phone up guests and stuff but of course visiting them would be fun from a personal perspective and it would add more character but but i think i think this is a a good solid idea you know it's just you know it's not funny it's not super original Mm. but it's interesting and I, who doesn't love castles? I love castles. I have to admit, I mm. do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Got a favourite? I don't know enough of them to have a favourite. I just, I love their feel and ambiance and I'd love to, I'd love to visit more mm. of them across Europe. What about Cryle Castle in Victoria? Have you been I to don't... Cryle Castle? <laughs> no. It's a really, really rubbish tourist attraction. It's like a fake castle with like a torture chamber and animals and stuff. Oh, right. It's out sort of near Sovereign Hill. This would be interesting for, for Max to hear that I, I would be quite interested in going to visit Stauffenberg Castle, um, which is uh, near a town called um, Eblingen, which is where my dad spent quite a lot of the war. So I'd be interested to go and see all there. And that's where Colonel von Stauffenberg, the famous person who put a bomb in the suitcase to kill Hitler and towards the end of the war. Huh. That's the, so I'd like to see Stauffenberg Castle. I'm not sure how grand it is, but that's more for the personal connection I vaguely feel to it, not not because it's necessarily a really great big English King Arthur sort of castle. Nice. All right. Uh, out of ten? Oh, look, I'll go six and a half. I'm not convinced, but it could be done really well. well. You and I are on the same wavelength today. I was going to go six and a half as well. There we go. Uh, Dylan suggested... 
Last Place, or The Backmarkers, a podcast which follows the worst sports team in a particular league and talks about their season. The thought being that the top teams get lots of coverage, but the worst teams don't, and also deal with lots of different factors which don't apply to the top teams. I like that idea. I think that's pretty good. Mm. That's a bit like the Cleveland Browns are sort of that sort of classic team, aren't they? They're sort of noted for being the heart team, but never yeah. doing too well in the NFL. I don't completely agree with Dylan. I think sometimes those teams that have bad seasons, particularly notoriously bad seasons, like they become quite famous in themselves. You know, the team that scored only one point in a season or the team that went winless or the yeah. team that had the most losses. Like, I think those teams do already get quite a bit of coverage in that kind of notorious way that you don't want coverage. But I don't think this is like a hugely untapped vein. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very famously, the Port Elliot Football Club here in South Australia um, lost a match like 350 to zero or something like that. And that made the paper. Right. Um, yeah. There's, so there's teams like that. It would be interesting to f- source out the characters and so forth of that team. Okay. So what do you want to give the back markers out of 10? I think it has potential, slightly more potential. I'm not. Yeah, I would give it. It's not totally original though either. I feel like I want to give it seven. I'm going to go five. Okay. Like, it would it would work, but I feel like it, yeah, I don't know. It's probably been done. It's hard to think of any kind of sport-related podcast that hasn't been totally done. Sport, just content, the amount of sport content in Australia now has gone through the roof, and it's just so overwhelming, and I'm so over it. Here we go. Wickus uh, has, has put two ideas in. The first one's quick, though. My first idea is called Prime Time. This is a podcast where the host interviews guests about their favourite prime number. Got a favourite prime number, Tim? <laughs> I can't remember what prime numbers are, but I remember being intrigued by them last time you told me what they were. <laughs> I, I, do t- I do spend a lot of time talking to you about prime numbers, so, yeah. I, I thought you'd know at least know what they are. Yeah, well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. They're numbers that, they're, they're numbers that can be divided by themselves and one only. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So give me an example of a prime number. Seven. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So is that your favourite prime number? Yes. <laughs> okay. There's no way I can commit to a favourite prime number at this short notice, but I'll get, I'll get back to you, Wickes. <laughs> uh, the other idea is the more serious one, and this is called Coma Stories. I thought of this after an experience I had. In 2021, I was hospitalised with serious COVID pneumonia. I was placed on a ventilator and was in a medically induced coma for two and a half weeks. During my time in the coma, I had some very interesting dreams, which at the time, being unaware that I was in a coma, thought was reality. So my idea is to get people on the podcast who were in a coma and tell the interesting things they dreamed of while they were in the coma. Ah, this is great. You can obviously remember them. I didn't know you could remember dreams after comas like that. Obviously, you can. Like, because I forget dreams so soon after I have them. Yeah. I, I have so many questions for Wickus. I have so many questions. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I feel like this has taken me back to a conversation that happened a lot when I was at primary school. The the notion of someone. I remember there was a very famous actor who was in the film The Light Horseman that we saw, and he on the way home from filming had a car accident, went into a coma. Oh, yeah. John. Blake, I think his name was. and Yeah, that sounds right, I think. Yeah. And I remember at the time the teacher explaining, you know, if he came to, then he would have to do school all over again. And at the, t- at the time that was just an overwhelming thought that someone would have to do all their schooling again. <laughs> That's the thing that really made an impression. Not that his life's destroyed. They, when you're young, they are very um, mysterious things, comas, aren't they? I mean, they mm. they are in general, but they were they are they they do capture your imagination as a kid, don't they? In in a strange way. We might, of course, know uh, a lot more about comas now than we did in the mid '80s when we were in primary school. Um, hmm. And there could be different experiences, yeah. but yeah, wow, dreams, coma dreams. I don't know what to think about this because I am intrigued by comas and interviewing people who have been in comas. I think is a good idea. But hearing about people's dreams, of course, is not normally interesting. It's no. notoriously boring hearing yes. about people's dreams. So I don't know whether hearing about people's dreams because they're in a coma makes them more interesting. Maybe it does. Um, and Wicker says, oh, you know, I thought it was real life. Doesn't everyone think their dreams are real life until they wake up and then realise they're not? Um, it would be interesting if it, 
if because the idea is i think with comas you don't know how much the person can sense about what's going on around them presumably nothing mm. but it would be interesting if their dreams related somehow to what was going on around them like in their dreams that was some sort of um exacerbated or different version of what was happening around you know what i mean like oh then I, a blue elephant walked in and we go oh that was sally wearing her blue elephant dress and you know what i mean and then i saw you yeah. know there was some sort of way yeah. in which it was yeah characterized yeah because you do yeah yeah out of 10 out of 10 I feel like I want to hear this once, and after I hear a lot more, I probably wouldn't want to hear lots of them. So I think it's a good idea for one episode with it, with some sort of expert, or with and then with people alongside it. No, I'm, I'm going to give it. I'm not going to give it. I'll give it six. Six. I'm going to go seven because I like the idea of a podcast about comas, but I don't think Wickers has nailed it with the dream element. I think we need to go elsewhere. But but just the idea of comas is so fascinating to me. I'll, mm. I'll do that. Here's Nicholas and Sarah, who also have submitted two ideas, but they're both short, so I'll, I'll do both of them. Um, the first one is Human Zoo. Two people sit near a crowded place like a train station, a tourist attraction, and describe and talk about the people they see. That could be quite funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love making up stories. This is a classic. There's a scene in Woody Allen's film, Annie Hall, where they're sitting there and they're, you know, sort of narrating a conversation they see of someone else happening across the, the, the sort of the parkland. And I love doing that, going, oh, look, there's Beryl talking to Peter. You know, they're about to get married. Yeah. Da- you know, that, that's fan. That's lots of fun. Yeah. I don't know if, fun, yeah. if it's fun in terms of people listening to it on a podcast who can't see them. But if you took another approach more seriously to, to describe and... That, that, that could be interesting if you if you could do it well. I remember being at the airport once and looking across from us and seeing like there was some young, super cool Japanese dude wearing like the absolute latest avant-garde fashion stuff I could never get away with wearing that looked like it was from a fashion show and he had all the latest stuff and he had these massive high-tech headphones on and he was just like in the zone and my wife leaned over and said, I don't know what that guy's listening to on his headphones, but it's definitely cooler than what I'm listening to. <laughs> <laughs> it, was so, it was certainly some like latest Japanese pop music that will never make it to our into our life. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> he yeah. was too cool. Uh, the second idea from Nicholas and Sarah is called Home Screen. Ask people on the street about their background image on their home screen and let them share the story behind it. Oh, okay. I love that idea. I love it. What's your home screen picture on your phone, Tim? Oh, oh sorry, the phone. I was thinking desktop because I'm staring at one now. Um, no, no, you, I think your phone's where we're going with that. But what is your home screen picture? My Mine is of my sister in Holland. Um, oh. Yeah, when we were over there, when I was over there, we traded photos with one another about when we were young. So this is a picture of her when she was young. I have the famous Earthrise picture taken during Apollo 8 first color picture they took looking over the uh looking over the horizon of the moon at the earth rising in the background uh, very very famous photo you're so on brand brady come on i am on brand well yours is dutch so don't you start <laughs> you're on brand too my sister's father do you know that he was dutch <laughs> it's the rumor is out uh, let, let me ask what you're going to give home screen out of 10 let's let's mark home screen as an idea i oh, know i like that idea yeah no i think that's a good i think that's getting up around an eight yeah 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 eight i'm gonna go eight as well yep Furlan suggested hate mail a podcast where the host invites people who receive ridiculous amounts of interesting hate mail reviews youtube comments to to go through them I could definitely do a podcast about this. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you get some hate mail? Mm. I'm a YouTuber, man. Have you never, ever seen a YouTube comment section? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. If you're going to include that as mm. well, yeah. Mm. Have, do you ever get emails, like direct ones from people? Or maybe you don't want to talk about this. I don't know. Just oh, I do, yeah. Uh, the people who send emails are usually less nasty. Right. They're normally... They're not always nice, but some. But there they can be... Um, because a lot of them are, you know, I want you to do this, I want you to solve this problem or make a video about that. But people who want to hate on you don't normally send emails. They normally just do it in comment sections, I find. Right, yeah. I think there is a trend of this happening, people reading out hate mail. I've seen this on, like, late-night shows and YouTube yeah. clips and things. So yeah. it has been done a bit. It's of limited interest. If they're funny, it's interesting. 
and the person being confident enough to read them out is quite funny and empowering but yeah and the rep- and the response to them can be funny yeah that's like a that's fun i'll give that i'll give that a five fell and not super original but i'd listen to it probably and as I said, I could definitely do it. I'll give it five two. I think I'd go five and a half if the idea could be improved by uh, composing a letter back. There is a nice idea of sending a formal reply back to hate mail. That, that's that got something in, in it. In Furlan's defence, it was a longer message that was sent with a few examples and ideas that did flesh it out in quite a good way. So don't right. feel too judged, Furlan. You did do a better job of selling your, your podcast. I haven't done you justice. Just get, just you just back... <laughs> Just ensuring you don't get some hate mail from Furlan there for your low score. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, continue on. I don't I don't want all the stakeholders turning on Furlan unnecessarily there. No. He could be be deluged. (laughs) He did a good job. And I do and I did encourage people to try to keep their suggestions concise, which some people did and some people didn't. And Furlan didn't. (laughs) Um Ben Ben says, I've had an idea for a podcast for years called Wax Lyrical. You have a guest on and they have to talk fanatically about something they love, but the requirement is that they can only do it for the length of a wax cylinder recording. Do you know how long they are? Yeah, I do, because I've made a wax cylinder recording before. Uh, I don't know exactly, though. It's like you're looking at three or four minutes, five minutes. They're short. It's short. Right, right. Yeah. Well, the ones I did were short, and I think that's as long as they go. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this is a Brady idea because it's really just about it's it's more about format than substance, you know, mm, style mm. over substance. Uh, and I love that. I love an idea that's a cool format. So for that reason, I'm obviously going to like it. Uh, so, and also, it might be a good one to do because you might be able to get a higher caliber of guest because it's such a small request on their time. Oh yeah, like Tom Hanks will. Tom Hanks will never do the Unmade podcast because he hasn't got time for us to do that. But he might do a wax lyrical because you're going to say to him, "Come on, Tom, you can talk about typewriters for four minutes. Mm. Come on." So that that works in its favour. I'm going to give this seven and a half out of ten. Can I can I just say that I'm I'm, I'm happy to go with seven and a half too. I okay. If Tom Hanks was up for doing it on a wax cylinder recording. Would you be happy mm. to make another wax cylinder recording? <laughs> I'd do it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got I've got contacts in the wax cylinder community. I'd do it. <laughs> We've got contacts in Tom <laughs> in the Tom Hanks world. Too. <laughs> mm. All right, let's go for it. Um, Hussein from Quebec says, "My podcast idea is called Forgotten Fabric." In this show, the co-hosts would each talk about their most forgotten or ignored T-shirt that they own. <laughs> They'd share the stories of where they got the T-shirt, why it tends to get ignored, and recent funny or interesting memories associated with it. I bet you love this idea. Yeah, this is a great idea. Yeah. You love a good T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I've got so many cool T-shirts that don't fit me at the moment. And right. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> why is that, man? Have you, uh, have you lost a lot of weight? Are they a bit baggy? Well, they're all... <laughs> It's it's related to that reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really frustrating. I've got, yeah. Mm. I do like this idea, though. So there's, that's one reason. It's like I can't wear it because it doesn't fit. That, but that's, hmm. there is uh, another reason. There are t- There's a T-shirt. Like I have a series of T-shirts that are all the same, except they're all V-necks. And then one of them, this is just for wearing around the home. And one of them's a round neck. Hmm. And I always, hmm. you know, reach to the pile of grey T-shirts and go, oh, it's the round neck and put it back and grab a V-neck. <laughs> just <laughs> And yet I, so I never wear it, but it's still on the pile. So okay, but it just tickles my throat if I wear it on. I don't like the title "Forgotten Fabric." Um, no, I haven't got a better one. I call it like the bottom drawer or something. Or um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And then you could make it not just about t-shirts, maybe. But I like the idea that it's about t-shirts, though. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that's great. Do you have a particular t-shirt that you? Avoid? I do, and a lot of them are to do with how they fit and look on me. You know, mm. like some. The ones I think are more flattering get worn first. Mm, um, mm. But yeah, I have I have lots of t-shirts from that are like merch, like unmade podcast t-shirts and things like that. Yeah, and those ones those ones I have to be careful about wearing because I don't think my, my I don't think my wife thinks they're very cool. So if I'm going somewhere where I think she wants me to look good, I won't wear it. But if I'm like, oh, I'm going to be home all day today, just sitting at my computer, I'll wear the Tim guitar solo t-shirt <laughs> or something like that. So. <laughs> 
Uh, what are we giving that out of 10? I think that's a good idea. I, I'm going to go high. Eight, eight and a half. That's good fun. I'm going to go seven. Jess, also from Canada, from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan, says, My podcast idea is a concept I think you'll be familiar with. Unmade books, where we talk about all the books we have an idea for but won't ever actually write. I feel like my brain is swarming with interesting novel ideas that will never come to fruition, and I can't be alone in that. And Jess even gives us one of her unmade books, her book idea that she'll never write. Are you ready? Yes. She says, fairies live in everyone's home and always have, but now the people are finding out about it. This is the story from the point of view of a variety of characters discovering the fairy folk that have always lived in their homes and what they're going to do about it. Hmm. I quite like that. I quite like that. It's it's like the start of like a sort of a Harry Potter-esque type series about the fairies living in our homes and stuff. Like, good stuff. It is a good idea. Good idea for a book not to write. Yeah, make sure you get on to not writing that as soon as you can, Jess. I've got two book proposal documents on my laptop. Hmm. One of them I'm just still putting together. One of them I wrote up and I've sent to a couple of publishers, which Hmm. um, uh, none of whom have taken it up. But I really like it as an idea and I'm sitting with it, although I can see it's maybe a bit too Tim. Um, and I've got another idea, which, which I'm just finishing off as well, that I think would be a good book. And I'm thinking of doing that. So I, I sometimes, if I get an idea, I, I, I actually like the idea of pulling the concept together and doing three or four pages, a bit of a sample, a table of contents. I like that sort of idea. And then deciding whether or not I send it off. Well, you remember my unmade book idea because you still give me grief about it all these years later. I had an idea for a novel, which I would never write. But I did write the first couple of pages and I think I let you read it. And it was like a, it was like a race to the moon. It was like a space race, a race mm. to the moon, but on another planet, like on an alternative Earth-like planet to find out how it went. But it was quite like Earth in a lot of ways. But the start, the setup for the story is that for the space race between like the rival nations is that many years ago, the nations were very friendly and they actually tried to get to their moon together. Oh, yeah. And and go into space together. And the I first this. Yeah. the first spaceship with like humans or humans on it went up and orbited the Earth, like, you know, like Yuri Gagarin. But because they were doing it together, they put two astronauts on it, one from each country, so they didn't have to choose who goes first. So these two first astronauts in space were on this craft that orbited the planet, but then it malfunctioned and couldn't come back and got stuck in orbit forever. And these two astronauts were in... The first astronauts ever in space were entombed in this ship that is just circling the planet even to this day. Mm -hmm. And on certain conditions, on certain nights, you can even see it, like, as a a small light, like, uh, going around the planet, like this, like, you know, like, you can see the space station. And it's this constant reminder uh, of what went wrong. And then the two nations kind of split and become rivals and then they both race to the moon but there's always i just liked the, pr- the premise of this constant reminder circling the planet that they'd tried before and it had gone wrong yeah nice i'll never write it i'll never write it and novels hard i mean my my proposals are non-fiction mm. i've always had this plot for a book it's a very simple idea but i've never seen it executed and until kind of recently and it's the idea of a, a novel that allows you to do it all over again. Like the classic, if you could live your life again, what would you do? Mm. And so a novel that somehow would allow you to live your life again would tell someone's life several times with slight changes and their consequences would be very difficult. Ah. That Things come close to it in terms of time travel, but this is a little bit different, to live it fully and then to do it all over again. Did you read the book, I think I think it was called Rodham, about Hillary Clinton, and it's like a fictionalisation of Hil- Hillary Clinton's life, oh. but she divorces Bill Clinton and uh, doesn't stay with him, and then has she, it's, it's this alternative history of her life. I heard about it. I haven't read the book, but I like that. In fact, I saw that at the bookstore the other day. Yeah, I, I haven't mm, read it. I read it. Is it good? I liked it. I liked it because quite, I'm quite interested in American politics and the Clintons. Mm. And I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. Does she go on? Does she remain in politics and go on to run for president? She does. And she runs, I think she runs against Donald Trump from memory. Does she marry again? I cannot remember. And I, and I won't say any more anyway because I don't want to go too spoiler-tastic. Sure, sure. I have to say the person I think that's come closest to it, funnily enough, is my favourite author, a guy called Paul Oster. 
he wrote a book called 4321, where he told the person's life four times with something changing in between. And that's the closest I've seen to, to that happening. And that, that, was, um, that was a good book that was nominated for the Booker Prize. But I was always amazed that like my favourite author suddenly wrote the idea that I've always had. But it's not, it's not, still not quite the same. It's more sort of sliding doors, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One mm. in circles on on a particular event. My, I think this is a really good idea. I think this is great. I'm going to give this a nine. A nine. Wow. Uh, I won't go as high as a nine. Um, I'll give it an eight. An eight. Okay. An eight. You yeah. looked. <laughs> you really thought about that I one, did, didn't you? I did think about it. I didn't rush into that. I, th- I really no. thought about the mark. Jake. A podcast all about conversion. I feel like the nature of changing one thing into another, which is so fundamental, always means there's something interesting to talk about. Here are some examples. Alchemical conversion, changing cheaper metals into gold. Alchemy. Converting files. I don't know where I'd be without tools like Pandoc and FFmpeg over the years, but not all file conversions are equal. Some files encode inherently more information, so going one way is lossy. You could talk about converting old media. You've got VHS tapes to DVDs or USB. Conversion in religion. This could be about be converting from atheist to some religion or vice versa or from one religion to another. Converting between languages. You mm. could discuss famous instances of translation and mistranslation from as far back in history as we know. Recently, there's Jimmy Carter's 1977 Warsaw speech where he accidentally expressed a sexual desire for the Poles. <laughs> etc etc conversion great idea good, good idea yeah like something we do isn't it that's like one of our ideas well that's what i was thinking too you could cut this out and we'll use it i'll use this in the next episode you want to use it yeah mm. <laughs> i'm sure you'd give it a terrible name <laughs> yes that's right <laughs> like like try again or something <laughs> yeah yeah um it's a very solid idea, very well explained with excellent examples. That's a future co-host right there. Well done. Yep. All right. <laughs> uh, so what are you going to give him out of 10 then? I'll give it a... I, I think that's a 10 idea. I think that's a great idea. Really? A I'm going to go a 10. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's not funny if you don't do a 10. Well, that's not a 10 for me. That's an eight and a half. Oh, Gosh. Kyle from Townsville says, I'm a long-time listener, first-time emailer. Podcast idea is called Which Comes First? The format, two hosts each episode discuss a pair of names and need to decide which comes first. Um, It could be based on things like phonetic rules or other things. People submit their names and the hosts decide. For example, is it Tim and Brady or Brady and Tim? (laughs) Other examples, Brad and Angelina. Sonny and Sher, Kyle and Esther. Uh, there you go. I always say Tim and Brady, and I, I usually write Tim and Brady in our descriptions. We were talking about this as a family this week. Yeah. Be- yep, it, that's right. Because I was talking about in a sermon, there's a character, there's a couple in a, mentioned in the Book of Acts called Priscilla and Aquila, and it's very unusual that the female's name comes first in antiquity, which meant she was quite important. And then I was talking about us, Brady and Tim, and Tim and Brady, and how it's always mm. been Tim and Brady, and how every now and then we'd introduce ourselves at parties as, G'day, I'm Tim from Tim and Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why does Tim, why do we I think we say Tim and Brady because Brady just sounds more like the suffix. It just ends better. It's a better way to end. It's got a big Y at the end. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. It just sounds like it should come second. I come I like on a radio show, you know how you have, you know, you know, Baz mm. and Larry in the morning, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. It's it seems mm. Tim and Brady would work. If we were a law firm, Brady and Tim, although we'd have Harren and Hine, wouldn't we? Yeah. Hein and Harren. Harren and Hine sounds better than Hein and Harren. That's yeah. true. Mm. Yeah. Could be an ice cream company or a law firm or something like that. Who comes first with you and your wife when people talk about you and your wife? Do you know? Like, I know you don't know what people say behind your back, but is I think... People tend to go with the person they are connected to most closely mm. first. I think yes. that's what happens. That's that's possibly true, actually. That mm. is possibly true. Uh, so the question is, if they know you equally, for some reason, who comes first? I don't know. It's, I don't know. I didn't even know the answer in my case. I think people say my wife's name first because they like her more and... She's just nicer and more charismatic. I think Brady also has a surname feel to it as well. Mm, mm, true. This is true. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. 
Interesting. Interesting. Uh, before we give Kyle a mark, uh, there was a little PS. As an aside, my partner Esther is from Adelaide. And the podcast has provided insight and education about her upbringing. The big rocking horse is on the list for our next trip in November. I'm from Melbourne and I've spent quite a bit of time out Traralgon Way as my mum lives in Gippsland. Oh, fantastic. Wonderful part of the country. We still buy this Gippsland brand of yoghurt. It's lovely, lovely yoghurt. Hmm. Or yoghurt if you're, if you're from England, yeah. That's right, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, and it's the yeah. brand is called Gippsland. It's from Gippsland. And so it's lovely having something in the fridge with a little brand on it that just, you know what I mean, feels like the country region where I'm from. A uh, little ad there. With no money changed hands as far as I know for that advertisement. So uh, that, was just, <laughs> that was just a pure, natural, organic endorsement. Indeed. And you can head to gippsland.com if you want to. <laughs> Use offer code TIM. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, where were we? Oh, we didn't give a, we didn't give a mark to Kyle uh, for that idea, which comes first. I quite like it. It's a fun thing to talk about. I'm not sure there's a whole... Well, what are some other examples of what... Well, you could, you could do it for like uh, musical duos and stuff like that. Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, things like that. But it's not just about the names, though, is it? It's got to be about... Well, I mean, it's obviously that's a launch pad yeah. uh, for, for further discussions. Uh, mm. but, but yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, it, it's gimmicky. It's limited. Five? Yeah. Five? five? Oh, ouch. I'm going to go seven. Seven and five. Or is it five and seven? I don't know. I don't know which it should be. This next one comes from Alex. Tim won't appreciate this one, I don't think. But this one really, really resonates in my household so i have to read it out alex says my two-year-old daughter likes a tv show called bing bing is a young bunny who is looked after by a soft toy rabbit called flop indeed all the children in bing's world are looked after by small stuffed animals why and how this came to be is never explained My podcast idea would be to flesh out the details of Bing's world. Why are the children cared for by stuffed animals? What happened to their parents? Who are the power brokers in this dystopian world? Just to kind of repeat the premise a bit, like it was, mm. it was perfectly adequately explained there, but just to add a bit more. In this TV show, it's like an animated TV show for little kids. My boy loves it. Loves it. Right. All the main characters are like these humanoid children. So Bing is like a rabbit, small rabbit. And uh, he's got a friend that's a panda and another one that's a little elephant. But they're little humanoids that walk around on their legs and talk and that. But they're obviously toddlers. But they live in their houses and they go out to the shops and the park and they walk around the roads and cars drive around. So it's it's a whole world they live in. Mm. But every kid has this little partner, this little stuffed toy that's smaller than them, but is an adult and looks after them and teaches them lessons and buys them stuff and cooks for them. like Like a nanny or a carer, like... But you only ever see that. That's all you ever see in this whole world. You never see parents. You never see adults. Even if it's at night and it's bedtime, it's morning, Mm -hmm. in a car, whatever they're doing. The the pictures on the walls of the houses and that. You never see adults or any evidence of parents in this whole thing. And it's really intriguing to an adult mind. And there are websites dedicated to it and discussions. And people are trying to figure out why is this world the way it is. Mm. We have two theories, two favorite theories in our house. Mm-hmm. One is that no adults have been seen since the virus, in quote marks, and right. all the adults were wiped out. And now <laughs> there's just this world where the kids are being looked after by these stuffed toys. The other one, which I quite like, is that this world is hell and the stuffed toys are adults that lead, led a bad life. And their punishment <laughs> is to spend their whole life looking after these naughty little <laughs> little children for the rest of their life, just being a permanent babysitter. But I'm fascinated by Bing and, and this world. So, Alex, you really uh, struck a chord with me. Oh, okay. And my wife. Okay. Yeah. Tim probably hasn't got much to add here. No, I've got, I'm not aware and I'm not conversant. So, I'm intrigued by I'm intrigued by, though. I like mm. that idea of the, mm. the backstory. Mm. Mm. The world of Bing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we we can't really ask for a mark on that one because Tim doesn't know it. So let's move on. Michael from Indiana. My idea for a podcast is called I'm Joking on the Inside. The basic idea is a discussion with various guests about their inside jokes, past or present, with friends or family. A variation of the podcast could also involve submissions of inside jokes that the hosts need to try and guess the meaning of. Oh, I'm not sure about this. No, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't. Yeah. 
I think this is like this is this is even worse than talking about dreams. It's like it's like here's a joke that you're not going to find funny and not going to understand, and now I'm going to explain to you why you should have found it funny. Yeah, like that, that, that's yeah. not going to work. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way in which that could be framed to fly, but I don't think it would. I think this is one of those podcast ideas where it's a podcast idea for your friend to listen to and no one else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like an audience of one. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Michael. Uh, three out of ten. Two. Yeah. Three. You'd go two? I'd go three. Two or okay. three. Where's the okay. extra mark in it? Where do you see the extra point? I mean, even the title. I don't like the title either, to be honest. I think you missed the title. It would be a good idea for a podcast about unmade podcasts. It would be a good idea for the unmade podcast because you and I mm. would pitch mm. it to each other, share a few of our inside jokes as an excuse oh, yeah. to tell a story. And yeah. people listening would go, oh, that's funny. There's a bit more information about guys. And then move on and never have to make it. But having to make it is not a good idea. So, mm. so it's, it's, mm. a good, yeah. it's a good mm. meta idea, yeah. but it's not an actual good idea for a podcast. But we're, of course, we're, we're, but we're not using it that way. We're just judging it and moving on. I mean, we, we are using it. <laughs> And our whole, li- our whole podcast is inside jokes, so uh, of course we like. <laughs> let's do uh, let's do one more, one more today. I've still got so many more here. All right, mm. I've got so many more. We're going to do one more here, and then we'll do a couple in the request room because we haven't got a request room properly organised. So we'll do a couple more in the request room mm. for Patreon supporters. So if you're a Patreon supporter, go to. Um, patreon.com slash unmade fm and all that stuff and you can go and listen to a couple more and then i'll save some more for a future date as well because there's still loads of good ones just to clarify you don't if you're if you're a patron supporter you don't go to patron if you're not you should what you want to say if you're a patron supporter already you're just going to get the, the request room come in wherever you get your podcast if you're not a patron supporter you should go to patron uh slash unmade or whatever it is in order to become a patron supporter yeah but if you're a patreon supporter right you don't automatically get the request room episodes in your podcast feed on your podcast player and stuff like that unless you follow a few steps. You need to do a few steps to get the oh. feed into your podcast player. So if you're a Patreon supporter, they're not just going to appear in Apple overnight. You have to actually go and do a little process. Do a couple of things to make that uh, happen. Okay, right. But, but if you're a Patreon supporter and you just go to the Patreon website, to the feed, mm-hmm. you can just go and listen to it there anyway, podcast right. player or not. Right. There's like a little play button you can press and you could just listen to it through your browser. So if you can't be bothered getting it onto your podcast player or haven't figured out how to do it and stuff, you could still go to Patreon and listen to it there. Okay, okay, right. Yeah. Nice. Yep. So so I say go to Patreon for everyone. Uh, yes. But, but yeah, the people who already have it on their player already know all this, so they don't need to be told. They've already figured it out. Right. Yes, of course. So there we go. Thank you for explaining. Uh, if you're not a Patreon supporter and don't ever want to be one, just ignore everything that just happened. <laughs> and we still love you. <laughs> George has this one about double lives. Uh, Each week we explore the life of one person who has lived two very different lives. For example, C.T. Studd. He was a professional English cricketer who quickly rose to the England eleven and was at the crease at the conclusion of the historic test that began the Ashes. He soon after left professional sport and became a Christian missionary in China. He did, yes. Surely there are lots of other examples, like astronauts who became artists and Amish people who became airline pilots. It could be fun. There you go. It's a good idea. And not that far from my idea recently about people that have two different jobs, but a bit different as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah it is fascinating. These some Renaissance people, they have a whole other life, a whole other career, a whole other change. Hmm. Fascinating. Hmm. Amazing. What about mm. Tim Hine, the, uh, the the Christian minister and educator who was also a podcaster? Tennis player. Oh, tennis right. player. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tennis player. Uh, you've done that. You were a journo and then you've sort of branched into this whole YouTube thing that didn't exist when you became a journo. I know true. that a similar film. It is kind of journalistic. Weird. Making films was different for me. But again, it was still kind of media and I, I don't think I'm a great example of like a dramatic change. Unless you do something new now, what would you do now that would be really different? Mountain climber, uh, Lego designer. Mm. A mountaineer would be a change. If I became a mountaineer, surely that would count as a big change. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. I'm just not particularly interested in it. Um, Okay. But. Right. Musician. (laughs) There's a different thing. That would be. That would would catch your attention. If I suddenly became a rock star, (laughs) you would be like, hang on. 
What's Brady up to over there? <laughs> Is he in a band? Oh, I would be amazed. Hang on, has he got an album out? Uh, uh, Did Brady just play Wembley? It's just, it's just, it's just what would happen. Would you be jealous of me if I became a rock star? Yes. Yes, yes, I would be. Yeah. I would be officially yeah. jealous. I would be really, mm. really jealous. I would be yeah. like, this is not, that's not your thing. Fair. You're not allowed to do that. You've got to stay in your lane. Hmm. And you've got a few lanes, but I'm not interested in those lanes, so you can stay in those mm. lanes. You're not jealous of my access to the international math community, for example. No, no, I'm not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're cool with that. You're happy for Brady. Oh, that's nice. You want a math medal? I'm really happy for you. You want a Grammy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Crap. That's outrageous. I'll be like, <laughs> it's because it's not your lane. No, it's not my lane either, but it's my fantasy lane. So you it's your fantasy lane. Know, don't oh, you. I'm not allowed in your fantasy lane. <laughs> I'd be happy if you joined one of my lanes. Like if you became a minister, I'd be like, awesome. This is great, Brady. We're colleagues. But if you join my fantasy lane of becoming yeah. a rock star, it was like, hang on a second, what are you doing in there? You're not allowed in there. Would you, how would you feel though if I became a minister and you came to my church and watched one of my sermons and it was like clearly better than your sermons? Well, I don't think that's very likely, is it? A- <laughs> <laughs> I would be absolutely tickled pink. I think it would be amazing. Yeah. It would be phenomenal. Yeah. I'd be- I don't feel that way. If you, st- if you started making science communication videos and they were clearly better than mine, I don't, I'm not sure I'd be happy about that. I would. I wouldn't be thinking. Oh, it's okay. As long as the world's learning about science, I'm happy. I'd be like, what? No. Oh, that would be Not heaps of that. fun if I just started making videos about the periodic table. Pro prime numbers. Yeah, t- they're all Tim. Sort of. <laughs> oh, this is. I'm so tempted to do this, film and edit them myself, and just like all serious, not satire, but just try and do my mm. very best to learn what I can and interview people and just yeah. put them out there. Oh, you go ahead. A, you do that. That's a you great do that. idea. What you can I that. call it? You've got a periodic videos. This could be the periodic, the alternative table, or the Tim's. Oh. Periodic videos or something. Oh, what did we give that a mark out of ten? Did we give George a mark out of ten for double lives? Oh, we've had a bit of fun with it, so I think we've got to give him a pretty good mark. Yeah, um, yeah, seven and a half, mm. eight. Yeah, I'm going to give it seven. Um, oh, this next idea is good, but hang on, I'm going to save it for the request room. Sorry, off to the request room, people, uh, for a couple more ideas, and then we've still got loads and loads more ideas. So um, we might come back to this. Let us know if you enjoyed hearing other people's ideas and whether you want more of it or you don't. Can I just say, because I have one more prop, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring out my prop in the request room. Tim's going to get his prop out in the request room. So that's, uh, if that's not incentive enough, then I don't know what is. See you there, people. <laughs> the secret word is that I would do a cough. Okay. And yep. I thought if I just did a cough, you'll 